Well, it's time now for a look at the day's top business news. And we're going to start with French carmaker Renault's uh, first annual General Assembly since the arrest and ouster of former boss Carlos Ghosn. France 24's business editor Brian Quinn is here with all the details. Brian. I believe it was a fairly charged meeting in Paris yesterday as shareholders demanded answers over recent troubles at Renault. The biggest recent headline, of course, the failure of a proposed merger with Italy's Fiat Chrysler. The new chairman, Jean-Dominique Senard, has expressed his frustration with the French government, a major stakeholder in Renault, whom Senard blames for tanking the deal through undue interference. Owen Barnell has the details. Things are not looking great for Renault and the French government. Relations between the car maker and its largest stakeholder were left on ice after the collapse of the proposed merger with Fiat Chrysler last week. Talks fell through after the French finance minister Bruno Le Maire called for a delay over concerns Renault's long-standing partner Nissan would not be on board. FCA backed out and Renault's chairman Jean-Dominique Senard has not hid his disappointment over losing out on the 50-50 merger. There was the possibility for the first time of creating a European champion at a time people complain we don't have one. It was a perfect opportunity for France, Renault and Europe to demonstrate that we were able to do something together. Reuters cited sources close to Senard who say he is furious with the finance minister and has unsuccessfully appealed to Emmanuel Macron for support. The French president snubbed the offer of a meeting. Senard has also pointed out it was Le Maire himself who had initially told him to make contact with FCA. Relations between Renault and Nissan were tense long before the proposed merger fell through. But since then, Renault has sought to block planned corporate governance reforms at Nissan, rushed through in the wake of the Ghosn scandal, further complicating an already strained relationship. Well, next, Donald Trump says he has no deadline for a new round of tariffs on China. Trump has repeatedly threatened to levy tariffs on the remaining $325 billion in Chinese goods not yet included in the ongoing trade war between the two countries. Washington has already slapped 25 percent duties on $250 billion worth of imports from China, including furniture and semiconductors, as it seeks a range of economic reforms from Beijing. On Wednesday, Trump once again accused China of reneging on commitments made during earlier trade talks. He says the relationship between the two is currently a bit testy. I think that we'll end up making a deal with China. We have a very good relationship, although it's a little bit testy right now, as you would expect. Uh, I think they really have to make a deal. A lot of companies are leaving China, as you know. It's uh, in all the reports, and they're going to Vietnam and various other places, and they're also coming to the United States to make their product because they don't want to pay the tariff. Checking in on the markets now, Asian index is mostly in the red as hopes dim that a deal to end that U.S.-China trade war might be reached on the sidelines of the G20 summit later this month. Tokyo's Nikkei closing down half a percent. Hong Seng in Hong Kong continuing to lose ground as protests continue there over a controversial extradition law. The index lost one and three quarters percent yesterday. It's down eight tenths of a percent so far today. Shanghai up slightly amid expectation of new stimulus measures from Beijing. The Kospi and Seoul closing down just over a quarter percent. European indexes opening lower as UK Conservative Party candidates heighten investor fears of a no-deal Brexit. The FTSE in London down around a tenth of a percent, similar for the Frankfurt DAX. Cat Canaral here in Paris off a quarter percent at the open. And finally for business, the video games industry is turning to streaming and vice versa. At the annual E3 conference in Los Angeles, cloud-based subscription services are the major theme. And now Netflix has confirmed it will be adapting its original content into video games. The hit series Stranger Things will be available as a downloadable video game for consoles and computers starting on July 4th with a reported game also in the works eve for a Dark Crystal show that they're making for Netflix. Do you remember the Dark Crystal? It absolutely means nothing to me, Brian. No. <laughs> Nobody around here knows what Dark Crystal is. It's such I'll look classic. it up though, I promise. You, I'll look no, it up when I go. Home. What it is. Brian Quinn with the business update. Thanks a lot for that.